Hello. How are you, my friends? How are you today? How are you enjoying the compulsory holidays? I hope you are catching fun at home in the name of Jesus. I bring you greetings from the name of the Lord, and I thank God that we are alive today to witness today, to witness what is happening at this part of the year. Um, I promise to talk about what I know and a few experiences on what I know that is going on and what God intend to do and what God is doing. But I'm going to take it briefly, briefly, short piece today. We are going to go through some revelation and the expository section and prayers. And I will try as much as possible to make it as short as it should be. Hallelujah. Um, to start with, I want to thank God that we are among those who survived so far what is going on, and I believe that you are here for a purpose. And as you understand that purpose, you are going to make great use of it in the name of Jesus. I want to thank God for his words to me. I really bless him, the words he spoke to me today, when he said, I'm going to make this video, and I believed, and uh, I said, Lord, what am I going to talk about? And he said some things to me, which I'm going to share with you, and out of these things, we're going to pray, and we're going to meditate, and we're going to move ourselves forward in life, having achieved what he wants us to achieve at this purpose. First of all, he took me to the book of Genesis. And uh, he used the word in my hearing as hiding. I was like, God, what are you talking about? Hiding, what does it mean? He said, in the book of Genesis, according to the story he gave to us by the Holy Spirit as the creation, he said, Adam and Eve disobeyed his instructions. And uh, their first move was to hide. If you remember, they hid themselves from God and he said, in the cool of evening, God came to stay with them and said, Adam, where are they? He said, I'm hiding because I've seen and now I know that I'm naked. Hallelujah. And then God himself covered them. That is that face and moved them away from the Garden of Eden. Now, the second stage was the second time he tried to correct man by eliminating part of the population of man. That was in the time of Noah. And uh, in that process, he made Noah to make an ark. And after that, he made Noah, or he hid Noah and his family in that act for 40 days and 40 nights. Hallelujah. And that process was over. Then if you come down to the book of Exodus, when he was ready to set the children of Israel free from their slavery or their slave masters in Egypt, just before the night of freedom, he said to them, get a lamb, make a sacrifice, and hide yourself in the house. Quarantine yourself like we have it today. Kill the animal, sprinkle the blood upon the two side posts and the lintel, and shut the door behind you, for my spirit will move tonight. Hallelujah. And that is that, again. Then if you come down to Jesus Christ himself, when he was ready to expose his real nature as God-man, he went up to the mountain and stayed there for 40 days, a wonderful isolation. And in the time of Saul, when Saul was converted to Paul, he had to go hide himself another three and a half years before he could come out. Now, what am I saying? Every time there is about to be a change or God is about to do something and create a shift, there is separation. 
or there is hiding or whatever you may call it and some people get destroyed along that process some other people get blessed along the same process some other people get prepared in the same process what we have now i believe is another period of separation and what you do with your own separation is up to you basically there are three processes you must go through or let me say five for you to know that you are actually separating for the purpose of god number one you must hear god the bible said that when adam and eve heard the word of god heard the voice of god they hid themselves if you come to noah of course noah had god and he gave him instruction what to do Moses, he had God. The Bible said in the book of uh, Exodus, I think chapter 3, he said when he had God, he hid himself for he has had God. He was so afraid before God said, no problem, stand up. Jesus Christ, of course, after the baptism, the Bible said the voice of God from heaven spoke. I said, this is my beloved son in whom I went with before he was taken into the wilderness. Now, most of the time, you don't have a choice but to hide. When it is God, of course, not man. Um, I was just discussing with the few people I have with me this evening. We are laughing over it, but it's a serious matter. When God, after God spoke to me on what to say tonight, I said, do you notice that people lost their jobs? People were abused because they came late to work. People were offended because they missed appointments. But I wonder, for the past few days or weeks, people have been sitting home. I wonder where all those rush was. I thought, I thought of people who had engagements, weddings, burials for this Easter, who had invited me personally and we are calling, keeping appointments to make sure that I don't miss. This is my own experience. Some of them have not even called me to say uh, it's canceled. Some events have gone past like four days, five days without communication. Why everybody is struggling to survive. Life suddenly became more important than the struggles. Life suddenly became so important that we forgot to go to the bank. We forgot to go and rush for money. We want to be safe from coronavirus. We want to be safe from death. And every business died, that's one phase. Then there are other people who are in a hurry to use it as an opportunity, especially in Nigeria here, for those of you that are in a better country like Europe, South Africa, America, you have subsidi subsidized products in the market to keep you happy. In Nigeria, it's tripled. Hallelujah. And some other part of the countries, are, let me be fair to Nigeria, there must be other nations, etc. but that is, incidentally, this is where I am. Hallelujah. But what am I trying to say? God did not call for this break in transmission of our life because of our selfish reasons. And I'm talking to those who really want to make the best out of this. Like I said, number one, have you heard from God about what is going on? Do you think it's a mere mistake? Do you think it's a coincidence? Do you think is a mere scientific activity? Like some would say is a mistake from the lab, some would say it's a deliberate act, some say these two countries are two power world fighting. But if you ask me, is just God giving us a little bit of his supremacy by a mere minute organism called the virus? A mere tiny molecules of things of living organism pushing the entire world giant to a standstill. That's amazing. In fact, it's not up to David fighting Goliath. That is a little reasonable. It's a minor thing sending everybody hiding. 
I hear people boast. I remember when uh, countries like North Korea and America, all over the TV, scaring people. People were still doing their business. If it had happened that way, man would say, yeah, there was nuclear weapon. But God used a tiny thing you can't even see with your bare eyes to stand every single human being, every nation, every world power, wealthy, poor, rich, pauper, extraordinary, vagant, wealthy people, everybody to his hiding room. And in the name of uh, good health, they call it quarantine. I want to assure you that if God didn't permit it, it will not happen. Hallelujah. It will not happen. It happened because he permitted it. Praise the Lord. Number two, after you have heard God, do you think that going into that place is to go sit at home, buy food, and eat? Incidentally, this is a Lenten period. The period we are supposed to say we are fasting. The period the people say, ah, we want to fast and prepare for the cross and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. My question is, some has been at home for one week, some nation closed a month, some two weeks, but at least more than five days. Uh, what have you done? These five days, what have you done? Are you busy moving outside, getting groceries, stocking your fridge, your kitchen, preparing for when you don't know it will end? Or do you think is a period for sober reflection? Do you think it is the time to know that man that kept you at this point? Hallelujah. Why don't you think about it? He said in the book of Isaiah 58, he said, is this the type of fast I've called for? Are you in a way thinking that God is actually giving you this opportunity to know him, to seek him? We are used to Papa pray for me, Daddy pray for me, a lot of calls, a lot of WhatsApp message, a lot of whatever. Uh, Prophet, what have you seen? What is going on? Are we going to survive this? Are we going to get out of it? If we come out with the economy, come back. That's all you think about. You, what did God tell you? Have you gone to pray? Have you gone to ask God about your own life? Don't pray for me. Don't pray for anybody. Pray for yourself. Seek God for yourself. You have the time now. Some of you have not read your Bibles since God knows when. This is time to read it. Some of you have read only the scriptures that will put your prosperity, put your safety. Have you actually tried to search your life standard? Is it giving God glory? Is it the life? I keep telling people that are praying or making announcements, doing some funny videos of Jesus coming, of trumpet blowing, I'm laughing. Listen to me. If you are dead, your own word has ended. If you drop dead now, don't wait for the coming of Christ. Christ has come for you. And so those that are waiting for the day they will see Christ coming from glory, it's going to happen. Now, tomorrow, when, I don't know. But you, when you drop and lose the power to breathe, Christ will be waiting to take you or condemn you. So for those of you that are crying, hey, the world is coming to an end, or the world is coming to an end, even if it ends today, doesn't make a difference. If it ends 20,000 years, it will come. It doesn't make a difference. What happens is that day you lose your own breath. Your Christ has come. 
because you cannot do anything about your life until that final day. What you can do is now. And that is why he gave you a wonderful long break. At least we are sure it's going to last for a month. So what are you going to do with it? Hallelujah. Some of us are crying. Debtors are owing me. How do I collect my money? Some are crying. Oh, God, I have my goods in the wharf. Some are crying. Ah, the products I produce, they shut down the market. I won't be able to sell it. My question is, when... If at all, and I know he will give us a break, the market reopens, everything comes back to normal, and you happen to be a victim, and you didn't make it, what happens? Hallelujah. I hope somebody is hearing me. What are you going to do? What are you going to say to your maker if you didn't make it out of the break? That is for you. The third one is, after the break and you survive, will you continue where you're coming from? Or is the world going to experience a difference because of you? You come back, hell and hearty, get back to your business as usual, and all this effort God has put in will be in vain. If you are a cheat, you go back to cheating, if you have sent people letters as 419, you'll be waiting for MAGA to pay. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know what you are thinking. Some are waiting. Your fraudulent businesses that you are sending down that was stopped halfway because of the break. You are busy blowing prayers, waiting for the meeting to come so that you continue where you stopped. You must be a joker. Hallelujah. You must be a joker. Hear me and hear the word of God. This break, this separation, this recess is for you to assess your life. Assess your life. Thank you, my sister. Assess your life. Think of where you are coming from, where you are now, and where you are going to. Let me ask you, some of us had engagements, business meetings, events to attend, burials, weddings, so on and so forth. Where are they now? Were you able to attend any of them? Those ones that their dates has passed. Let me shock you, if actually it's going to be a shock. That is the way it will be the day you drop dead. Hallelujah. That's exactly how it's going to be. The world will move on without you. But guess what? The God you have refused to move with is the one you will face. The God you have refused all this while the God you have mocked, I, I wonder, I don't want to sound offensive to anybody, but I have to say this. Most of my colleagues, the men of God, the prophets, the pastors, the reverend fathers, turned the pulpit to an entertainment ground. We are jokers in the name of comedians come to entertain people at the time the people are supposed to be taught of the truth of the word of God. Where are they? Hello? Where are those jokers? Pastor, you told them that grace covers everything. I want you to speak the word and let the virus just vanish. Is here. Judgment is here. Ah, 2020, year of favor, year of prosperity. My brother, four months don't go, we'll never see a more. If I must speak in pigeon. In January, when I said this year, 2020, the just shall live by faith. 
Uh, he said, no, God promised us 2020. I had a lot of Christians. They criticized me so much that maybe I'm a prophet of doom. Why do I always see things from another angle? But I'm telling you, reality is here. Well, to bring down your tension, according to what God told me, this recess will not last too long. There will be a break before we are done with Easter holidays. There will be a relief, I'm sure of that. But I bet you the real thing is coming. The relief is to give hope to those who are faithful and give opportunity for those who are caught on our ways to be prepared. You cannot live the way you like and the way you want and expect God to smile at you. A lot of evil has been going on all this while. And uh, I remember 2017, I had a program in Zaria. And I told them what God said. He said, He's about to separate the chaff from the wheat. And he was specific. He said, tell them, I will expose one by one all that mock my name in the name of preaching, in the name of being men of God. And uh, I don't need to say much about that. You know what is going on. But do you think it will end at that? No. He said, if you reject me, I will reject you. Some said, all is what is important, open branches every 10 kilometers, every 5 kilometers, every 1 kilometer, all over the city. Important is that the name of Christ is preached. Very good. But Jesus said, you that preach is a double-edged sword. The words you hear as you speak, they judge you. Hallelujah. They judge you. I'm not, I promise not to take too much of your time. We're going to pray. But I'm not praying for coronavirus because you can't stop it. When Moses was dealing with the Egyptians, God said, I'll harden the heart of Pharaoh. So I know some people's heart are hardened, actually. But whenever he will go back to God and plead and return, Pharaoh will do more. So pleading and returning for the coronavirus or COVID-19, whatever they call it to stop, is a good one. If you have the strength, you can go on. But I think the most important thing is to give God back your soul. Everybody knows how to put, I am the apple of God's eye. Are you? I'm a believer. I'm the apple of God's eye. Are you? As a young lady, from December to now, how many men? As a young man, how many women have you gone down with? As a businessman, the last good you sold were the original or fake. Ah, something you bought for 10 naira. You shout and scream. Ah, I bought it for 100. If you want, I show you receipt. You know the goods are bad. You go ahead and sell it, convincing the person is the best. And any little thing, I am at the apple of God's eye. How? The Bible said the eyes of the Lord cannot behold iniquity. Not to talk of somebody filled with iniquity to be his eyes. It's impossible. Don't be deceived. And stop deceiving yourself. If your conscience condemns you, how do you think God will accept you? Is anybody hearing me? So our prayers is not going to be to pray for whatever is called COVID-19, cholera virus, whatever it is. Even if it's Corona Masters virus, I don't know. But what I know is if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. 
turn away from their wicked ways. Purpose to seek my face. Then I would hear from heaven and heal their land. I will then hear from heaven. Before God will hear your prayer, the first stop is repentance. That is the first bus stop. The bus stop of amendment of your evil ways. Somebody will say, man of God, how do you know people are living in sin? Well, tell me that they are living righteous, I will believe you. If you can open your mouth and say it. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to get ready to talk to yourself. I don't know who is there with you, whether you are in your sitting room, whether you are driving, whether you are on the street, whether you are even drinking or smoking, or whether you are even having sex with somebody that is not your partner right now and you thought it was a phone on the phone, or whether you are preparing yourself to go into the sin. One thing I know is that you are hearing me now. Thank God for all the people online. Thank God for those that will watch later. Thank God for those that will be sent it to on YouTube. But what I know is that whichever way you are listening, drop whatever you are doing. Open your soul to God and begin to ask for his mercy. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. Ask for mercy. I'm not leading you to Christ. I'm leading you to repentance. Ask God for mercy. Too many of us are born again. But I wonder how many of us that the Spirit of God is resident in. For whichever position you are in now, you have the opportunity. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. You know yourself. You know exactly where you belong. You know exactly what you are doing. You know exactly what you have been doing. This hour, talk to him. Amend your ways. And get him through into your heart, into the deepest and the darkest part of your heart. Without the light of the truth of the word of God, you have no hope. You will go for this break and come out the same sinner. And as long as you come out the same sinner, you have lost the purpose for this break. This break is for you to amend your ways, to have enough time without your boss disturbing you, without anybody calling you for this or that. The opportunity for you to say, I'm sorry to God and reconcile yourself. Hallelujah. I hope you have prayed that prayer and I pray for as many that pray and ask God for mercy, that the mercy of God will reign for them in the name of Jesus. Number two, prayer. I want you to pray that by his mercy, he will reveal to you your purpose on earth. It's important because if you don't know your purpose, you are foolish. You are waste. Your end is with you. Until you know why you are here, you cannot even tell if you are doing right or you are doing wrong. The important thing on earth is for a man to understand his purpose. The reason Adam and Eve failed, if they understood that God has given them dominion over every creature, they won't have succumbed to a mere serpent. But they didn't understand who they were. They never understood their purpose and they lost the garden. You need to understand your purpose. I assure you, I may not know why you are here, but I know the reason why you are not here. I know most of the reasons why you are not here, why you are here. Listen, number one, you are not here for pleasure. If pleasure is one of the reasons why you exist, then you have already missed it. Number two, you are not here for wealth. 
your cars, your houses, they mean nothing. Number three, you are not here to please any man. Because your family is this, because your family is that, because of your name, anything you do against the will of God will destroy you. Number four, you are not here in whatever way to make a name for yourself. He said, give all glory, return all glory unto God. And finally, I will tell you one thing I know that is the reason you are here. That one thing is to worship God. Every other thing is unique according to your, cre your creation and your creator. Every other thing apart from worshiping God is one thing that generalizes all of us. Every other purpose is unique to you. And you find it out from your maker in the name of Jesus. Another prayer you are going to pray. You are going to pray that you may escape these evil times. You need to pray that you may escape these evil times. If you don't pray for yourself, if you are my son or my daughter, don't count on me praying not for you always because I need to pray for myself. And after myself, I pray for my wife. After my wife, my family. After my family, you. Look at the line. You are not number two. You are not number three. But I have the duty to talk to you. I have the duty to share the word of God. For the Bible said, go ye into the world and preach the gospel. That's the instruction he gave me to you. He didn't give me the instruction to pray for you. Is anybody hearing me? I need you to understand the truth and the fact of the word of God. I have so many people as sons and daughters and believers, friends. I pray for as many as I could at a time. But let me tell you, I cannot pray without praying for my family. I cannot pray without praying for myself. And I can pray with praying for so many people and still miss some people. I need you to understand this. Do I hate you? No. Am I choosy? No. But I'm a human being. If I begin to mention prayer points every 30 minutes for an individual, I will only succeed in praying for 24 people in a day. Or maybe 48 people maximum. And uh, I'm sure if you are going through the comments and people watching, those that have come in and come out are more than that number. So if I spend 30, 30 minutes praying for every individual, in a day I'll end up in praying for just 48 people. So, you need to pray for yourself. You need to line your faith with mine to hear God. You need to align your faith in this order to obey God. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes, so you see this good. <laughs> I'm laughing. Uh, for those of you that sow wonderful seeds and believe that seed can save you, uh, now there is no church. I wonder what you do. Because even if you pay to the bank, there will be no laying of hands and there will be no touching. And I bet you, your big papa that you are that you want to lay hands on you I command you to go and embezzle government money and pay tight he's afraid of you he doesn't want to catch coronavirus so there's no laying of hands <laughs> hallelujah ah it's funny but it's real 
I wonder how many. Oh God, let me not go there. But pray. Pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. Another prayer point I want you to pray at this hour. Pray for your neighbor. Pray for your brothers. Pray for your sisters. Pray for your uncles. Pray for your aunties. Pray for the fathers. Pray for the mothers. Who I'm sure good number of them hate you. Good number of them don't want your good. I know. Before you begin to tell me about your evil uncles and aunties. And God did not say you must pray good prayers for them. But always pray good prayer. Because it will pay you better. Is anybody hearing me? I don't have to give you prayer point to pray. But pray for them. Say something about them. Unto the maker. See what God is doing. See how God will touch their lives. To turn unto him. A lot of them can be annoying. I know. Yes, yes. A stranger on the street cannot so easily offend you. It has to be somebody in the house that will curse you, abuse you, neglect you, and do whatever. But don't let them be a stumbling block to your making heaven. Don't let your relatives, your friends, be a stumbling block to your faith. I bet you forgiveness is better and sweet more than vengeance. Forgiveness is sweet more than vengeance. But it's always a difficult part. It takes a man or a woman who has had an encounter of grace and mercy to forgive and move forward. Another prayer point. Pray and ask the Holy Spirit to kill the spirit of competition. We don't normally talk about this in the church, but I tell you, this is one of the greatest weapons the devil is using against the children of God. The demon of competition. Who are you competing with? Why do you think you have to be like him? Why do you think you have to be like her? Most of the evils that are being committed by Christians is the test to measure up. The test to compete favorably. Who told you life is a competition? That the small boy is making money and you are not making. Who said, who said that you have anything in measure with him? Are you listening to me? Have you seen your mates? Your mates are doing this. Your mates are doing that. My brother, pray against that demon. Haven't you seen your mates who built mansions? And never slept in them. And the very people he thought is better than go to court over the property. Some settle peacefully and live in it and enjoy it. Have you not seen that? He said we will live in houses we did not build. When your competitors are busy building, and maybe God is allowing them to build so that you inhabit. And you are busy killing yourself. Ah, God, you hate me. You don't want to bless me. Who told you? How do you know that that building is not your blessing? Now, some of you wait and look for the brother or the sister or uncle to die so that you can inherit property. You're a lazy man. Walk in your own vision and direction according to the leading of the Holy Spirit to fulfill the purpose why you are here. Leave another man. I see husbands get bitter because their wife are rich. I see wives so angry because their husband is rich. 
I've seen wives so angry because their husband is poor, comparing their husband with another people's husband. Stupidity. Foolishness. And I keep telling them, Instead of comparing your husband with Mr. A, why not go and be the third wife of Mr. A or the concubine and leave your husband so that the man can go to heaven, so that you can go to hell and die on your own? At least you know you are committing sin. You go and die and leave putting the man under pressure that he will die before his time. Amen. This is a warning for you. Don't start what you cannot finish. Women can be always be women, but be a man. I know a lot of complaints, men trying to fulfill a promise they made to their wives. And when you see the outcome and the final result of that mess, you wonder, will a reasonable man go this far? just to satisfy a woman. The Bible said, despise not the day of the little beginning. If your wife cannot support you in the little beginning, let her be and face God. If your husband cannot be happy for you, let him be and fulfill your destiny with the Holy Spirit. Nobody will answer for each other on the final day. Hallelujah. Then finally, I want us to look at the prayer points that will give us a new beginning. For sure, there is a paradigm shift. There is a major shift in life. Things can never get back exactly the way they are. But I want you to pray and move yourself in the level, at the platform, where the new beginning will favor you. Pray this next prayer point. Prepare yourself. Spiritually move yourself. Meditate in the word of God to suit into the new move after this break. It can never be the same. I won't know if it's worse or better, but there is a big shift. And I tell you, the punishment ain't over. But there is a new beginning. And for 2020, the word still remains, the just shall live by faith. So if you don't have faith, I don't know how you're going to survive. But you must believe in God. You must come to the realization that though God is real and that he's waiting for you to bless you. He's waiting to walk with you. Don't be a spectator. Be useful in the field of play of life. If you are not the player in the pitch, be among those sitting on the bench with eagerness to play. And once it's your time, you go out and play. Don't be among the gallery of onlookers. Participate in life at least in your own life. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, I want you to raise your right hand and say, Father, I believe that this message is for me. My particular case may not be mentioned, but I know for sure that you are here to prepare me for the new move that you are preparing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for you never fail. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I believe there's somebody, I hear you lament of debtors, people owing you. Why are you still thinking? God kept you alive. I don't expect this to be the first prophecy in this meeting. But if people are owing you, talk to God about it. After all, in Igbo language, Adej is Israel, but it's the word of God actually. Try to have some reserves in heaven and think of heaven. Hallelujah. 
But that doesn't mean that your labor or your sweat will be taken away from you. God will arrest the person and they will pay you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Those of you that have events that you feel disappointed, if your event is above the 12th, I think there will be room for you to do it. The way I saw, the 12th of April, I think there will be a room for you to attend those or participate in those events. But hear me, let your major event be how to save your soul. Let your major event be how to be useful. And I want to talk to fellow men of God. If you are my son and you are on, and you have been following me as your mentor, you should know that my watch word is, what will Christ do if Christ is here now? And I extend it to as many that watch in future and those who are watching. Whatever situation you see yourself, ask yourself, if Christ was the one here, what will he do? And let me tell you, if he performed the miracle, perform the miracle, you can. You have the power. As long as you are living right with God, the right hand of God will always be with you. For some of you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There is somebody, a lady, you are stretching forth your hand saying, Oh Lord, heal my leg. I don't know, maybe there's something like ulcer, foot ulcer. I pray that God will heal you in the name of Jesus. I pray that the God will heal you in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, thank you, Father. There is a diabetic issue. Uh, thank you, Jesus. You have a sore. There is a wound by your feet, and you are so scared. God is healing you now. God is healing you in the name of Jesus. The miracle of God is for those who hear and believe. The miracle of God is for those who hear and believe the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I hear the word Alex, Alex. I don't know who Alex is, but whatever is going on in your life, be calm. God is saying, be calm. I did not forget you. I did not forget you. I will not put you to shame in the name of Jesus. Let the word of God continue to flow into your spirit in the name of Jesus. I just want to have a word with you, and that is what I've done. Uh, let's go on to the prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That there, there, there's somebody you are at the third trister of your pregnancy, and the reports the hospital are giving you are not good, and you are scared. You are saying, Oh Lord, what am I going to do with all these things? Ah, Jesus, Makayara, Bosatali, Bredushi Halada. Ah, you would deliver that child and you will be shocked how sweet and easy it will be in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, let your heart not leap so much. God is in control. What is happening is of Him. And He's preserving you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Marabu Sitaladia. Empredus Catalede Jihalada. There, there, there is somebody, yeah, there is, for the past 13 days, there has been a heavy headache. I, I want to believe is out of pressure. Let God touch you and give you peace. Whatever is worrying you, whatever is bothering you, that putting, that is putting that pressure on you, let there be a sudden touch of relief in the name of Jesus, so that you have a healthy life in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. I, I see somebody, I, I see somebody, you are under financial pressure, and I, I see you thinking of how to go on the street. God will not allow that in Jesus' name. Now, now I, I know everybody 
is hanging on for prophecy. This is not the purpose for this. The purpose for this is to pray and uh, share some insight on what is going on, which I've done. Just pray that you will be among the new beginning that is hitting us. But I must warn again, in your prayers, please put the month of June and July. Put the month of June and July. Pray for the month of June and July. Pray for the month of June and July. There is need for intercession for these two months that God will make out of mercy, reduce, subsidize what is coming. Hallelujah. Uh, let, he, let him find us in this recess worthy of mercy. Let him find us, pray that God will find the world worthy of mercy in the name of Jesus. Then I pray for this country, Nigeria. And I pray for you wherever you are as a Nigerian. The blood of the innocent. I try to avoid it as much as possible here. But the blood of innocent the blood of the innocents, the blood of the innocents. Don't be surprised. Pray for the month of June and July. Exonerate yourself by being among the righteous. Exonerate yourself from what is coming by associating yourself with the Holy Ghost. Keep yourself free and secured by hiding yourself in the very wonderful, watchful eyes of God. Ah, put yourself, for the Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, the secret place. Find your way to the secret place, for that is the only place you will be safe. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now to round up, I want you to connect with me on Sunday by 10 a.m. There is a message God has been giving me. We're going to look at it and pray with it. Sunday morning, 10 a.m. We'll be on. And I pray for you. I pray for you strongly that you'll be alive till then. The coronavirus will not catch you. Hallelujah. And you'll be very healthy, sound-minded to be able to listen and pray with us. I love the scripture. It says, Believe the Lord thy God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophet, and you will prosper. May God bless us all. Thank you for watching. Thank you for praying. Thank you for listening. And thank you for continuing living in righteousness. May God bless you in Jesus' name. I see some comments. If you still have things, comments, prayer requests, uh, when the video is off, send the prayer request. I'll go through them and I'll pray for you. And uh, communicate effectively so that God himself will be happy you did. In Jesus' mighty name, God bless you. Shalom.